Welcome to yet another video of Code from Scratch. So proud of you for showing up today because today's question is extremely important. This is a question that I have personally asked to so many candidates. This used to be one of my favorite questions. I have asked it to so, so many candidates because it's a very good question to analyze the thought process of the candidate and also it sees very nicely whether, you know, candidate can write the recursive code or not. And I want all of you to develop the same thought process. And that is why this video is so important for me. Without wasting any time, let's get started. So this is the question. We basically have to generate parentheses. So there are two, three important points to it. See, when n is given to you as three, that means there will be n number of well-formed or balanced parentheses. Now, what does well-formed or balanced means? So let's see that. See here, there are three opening and three closing parentheses always. See here also, if you count the opening and closing, there will always be three opening and three closing, right? So firstly, how do we make sure that, okay, the parentheses that we are generating are balanced? That is the most important point of the question. Then secondly, how do we write the code for that? Okay. So let's first try to build the logic and see how will we generate the well-formed or balanced parentheses. See here, I've written all the combinations for two parentheses and for three parentheses. So let's first try to understand how are we making sure that, okay, these parentheses are well-balanced. Okay. So now here, if we see this one, well, first we have put the opening one, we, then we have put the closed one, opening, closed. Here we have put open, open, closed, closed. We can't go like we will put first close one and then open one. This is not balanced. What does balanced mean? Balanced means we can close only after opening a parenthesis, right? So that is the important point of well-balanced parenthesis or well-formed parenthesis. See over here also, if you see, we keep opening and then we are closing. Here also, if you see, see if there are like two open, then we close one, then we open another one, close one. Then we are yet to close this one, so we close this. Similarly, over here, we open, open, then we close these two, then we open the third one, we close the third one. So basically, my important point is that you can close a parenthesis only if you have opened a parenthesis earlier, right? You can't close it first. So if this is invalid, say if you have done this, you can't again go like this. You basically have to open first and only then you can close it. So to basically well form or balance the parenthesis, you have to make sure that you can close a parenthesis only after opening it. You can't close it first. So the first logical thing that comes to our mind is that, okay, we will maintain two counters. One counter will okay tell us that how many parentheses have we opened and one will tell us that, okay, how many have we closed? Okay. And we can add a closed parenthesis only when we have one at least opened parenthesis that we haven't closed yet. To repeat my point, first thing that we notice is that we can close a parenthesis only if there is a parenthesis that we have opened and we have not closed it yet. Okay, so there is one open parenthesis that we have not closed yet. Basically, if we close this, obviously we can't close it again, right? There should be an open parenthesis that we have not closed yet, only then we can close it. Okay, so this is the first thing that we notice. Then second thing that is given to us is that open and close parenthesis, the number of this should be less than n. So these are the two important pointers that we have. Now I said that, okay, let's keep a counter. Let's say we have two counters. One is for open one and closed one. See, these are just counters that will tell that, okay, how many parentheses that we have already added that are opening and how many parentheses that we have already added that are closing. Okay. Now what I'm telling you is that we can add another close parenthesis only when the number of open parentheses is greater than close parenthesis. Why is this? See, if we have closed a few parentheses, then means that those many open parentheses have already closed. Now, is there any unclosed parenthesis that is there? Only then you can add another closed parenthesis, right? It's okay if it's not here. We'll take examples. Don't worry. Okay. So this should be the first condition. You can add the closed parenthesis only if the number of open parenthesis is greater than closed parenthesis. Second thing is you can. So this is when you can add the closed parenthesis. Second thing is when can we add open parenthesis? We can add open parenthesis only when the number of the open parenthesis is less than n. Let me quickly repeat this. See, we have to form a string and it is given to us that our string will have n open parenthesis and n closed parenthesis. So at every point, we have two options, either add open parenthesis or add closed parenthesis. Now we have to 
look for conditions such that we make sure that our parenthesis or the string that we are forming is well balanced okay so i said see you can close a parenthesis only if there is a parenthesis that you had opened and you had not closed if you have already closed it obviously you can't close it again so you can add close parenthesis basically this is close parenthesis only if the number of open parenthesis is greater than close parenthesis i hope this is clear don't worry if it's not clear we will take examples and understand this again second thing that i said is that we can add an open parenthesis only when the number of parenthesis is less than n because in the end we can add only n open and n close parenthesis so we obviously have to make sure that open parenthesis is less than n see because we are adding a close parenthesis only when open is greater than close we are also making sure that close is less than n see we don't have to add this condition because this and this will make sure that okay this is always true otherwise this also has to be true let's take examples and understand now see here we have like four places to fill at every place we have two options either we can fill it with open parenthesis or we can fill it with close parenthesis this much is clear right every position we have two options this much should be clear now what do we do we start with open counter as 0 and close counter as 0 right so there are no open parenthesis there are no close parenthesis now in such a situation can we add a close parenthesis we cannot add a close parenthesis because we don't have any closed one right so what do we do we just add one open parenthesis okay so here what happens open becomes equal to 1 and close becomes equal to 0 now from here we have two options add open or add closed can we add closed yes we can add closed why because we have number of open parenthesis greater than number of closed parenthesis so what we will do we will just close this one in this case open becomes equal to 1 close becomes equal to 1 in this case what happens when we add open one open becomes equal to 2 close becomes equal to 0 because we are just adding this and why is this correct because the open parenthesis can be maximum 2 and right now there was only one so i can add another one right now from here again there becomes two options we can add open one or we can add close one so can we add open to this because if we add another open to this then the number of open parenthesis will become equal to 3 which will be greater than the end that we have so i can't do that so that is why i can't come over here but the number of open parenthesis is greater than close parenthesis that means i can still close the parenthesis so i will go like okay and here what happens can i add another open parenthesis yes i can add another open parenthesis why because see uh, i have open parenthesis equal to 1 and the total number of open parenthesis that we can have is 2 so what i am going to do i am going to go like here open becomes equal to 2 and close becomes equal to 1 here open becomes equal to 2 close becomes equal to 1 here what happens from here can i add another close one so basically it will just end up looking like this this is wrong see because i can't do this the number of open is not greater than number of closed so this is not possible so i can't add another close one from here so what i am going to do now again from here i have two options i have two options can i open another one no i can't open another one why because the number of open parenthesis is already two and the maximum that i can have is two only so what am i going to do i have only this option that is closing so i am going to close over here See here again I have two options open or close can I open another one no because the open has already become two so what am I going to do I'm going to uh, not come over here instead I'm going to close so in this case what will come so basically open becomes equal to two close becomes equal to two open becomes equal to two close becomes equal to two so when this condition happens basically when now number of open parenthesis is also n the number of close parenthesis is also n that is the case where i can actually uh, be sure that okay this is one possible uh, permutation that i have to push to my resultant vector don't worry if it's not clear when we will write code it will be completely clear let's just start writing the code now obviously we will be writing a recursive function i'm not going to return anything from it i'm going to call it helper now what are things to be need to pass to this function we need to pass the string that we are dealing with see what do we have to return in the end we have to return a vector of strings so these are the strings that we are going to form so there will be a current string that i will be dealing with okay what else we need to pass i need to pass the current counter of open parenthesis and close parenthesis so i am just going to call it int o and int c uh, you should actually be writing open parenthesis close parenthesis counter but right now just to make it easy to understand i am just calling it o and c you also need to pass the n value that has been given to us in the question 
and we need to pass the vector where we will be making the changes and where we will be storing our answer okay uh, because i'll be making changes to it i'm passing it by reference i am sure this much all of you can do by yourself now right see now at every point we have two options either to add an open parenthesis or to add a closed parenthesis right so now we will see what will be the condition where we will add open parenthesis and what will be the condition where we will add closed parenthesis okay now we can add open parenthesis only when the number of the open parenthesis that we have is less than n does that make sense or not see total number of open parenthesis can be n we are maintaining a counter obviously this has to be less than n this is like this should be very obvious right so only then we can add an open parenthesis now in this case what i will do i will call the function again and the new string that i will pass now in that i will just add one open parenthesis that's it so i have a current string that i'm dealing with i'm adding one open parenthesis to it and sending it to the next recursive call so now what will i do my open counter will now increase right because i have added one open parenthesis obviously i have to change the counter the closed parenthesis will remain same because i have not done any changes i have not added any closed parenthesis the number of closed parenthesis will remain same as it is okay and i will pass n and i will pass rs right now when will we add closed parenthesis we can add closed parenthesis only when the number of open parenthesis we have is greater than the number of closed parenthesis we have so we can close a parenthesis only when there is an open one na otherwise it will not be balanced you can close only when there is open right that is your main condition now another condition should be that number of closed parenthesis should be less than n now think about it this this is like common logic see open is less than n and you are making sure that open is greater than close so obviously close is less than n right so in this case even if you add one more close you are making sure that okay this is less than this is not less than equal to so you are making sure that okay your close is also less than n always because of these two conditions otherwise this should also be the condition that the number of close parenthesis is less than n because it is given to us in the question the number of open and close parenthesis should be le less than or equal to n right now what we will do in this condition we will call the recursive function again in the current string that we have we will add a close parenthesis the number of open parenthesis remains same the number of closed parenthesis becomes c plus 1 and we will pass rs we will pass right now in the recursive function what else do we need to add again to avoid stack overflow we have to add base condition what will be a base condition when will we be done forming a string we will be done forming a string when we will know that okay the number of open and the number of closed parenthesis the number of open and the closed parenthesis becomes equal to n why is that the case see every answer that we will have will have n open and n closed in the end you have to fill only two n places so that is when you are sure that okay you have formed your string so if o open is equal to n and if close is also equal to n that means we have formed a string so what we can do is we can add our current to our res and we can just return from here Let's quickly call the helper function also and try running it. So we have to form a vector of string. I'm just calling it R E S. And when I call my helper function, so initially I have to pass the current string. Initially it will be empty. There will be no open parenthesis. There will be no close parenthesis. So both the counters are zero. Then we have we will pass the n value. We will pass the R E S value. Now this helper function will itself take care of everything. All I have to do is I have to return R E S from here. Let's compile and see. now let's submit and see see in this question also there were two options everywhere the option was to either open or to close so two options for every position but here because we were given a condition that there should be well formed or balanced parenthesis there was a condition when we can add the open parenthesis when we can add the close parenthesis so here also recursive tree has like two options it looks like that only but sometimes the left part of the tree is not called sometimes the right part of the tree is not called that is what we saw in the diagram right see here it is given to us the expected time complexity is 2 par n into n see why 2 par n see because every place can be filled in two two ways either open parenthesis or close parenthesis so two possibilities for n positions 2 power n and now so these are the number of possibilities and you will either copy or you will uh, output the entire thing so into n what will be the auxiliary space see in the end what is the size of the string that we are forming it is 2n 
because there are n open and n close right so the number of so the length of the string becomes 2n and x is the number of valid parentheses see on, that is the maximum length of a recursive stack so you draw the entire recursive tree you try for like n equal to 3 we drew the diagram for n equal to 2 you draw the diagram for n equal to 3 let me know if you have any doubts i am here to help you we are moving to really hard questions now these are the questions that will help you clear your interviews till now we were doing like basics and stuff but these are the questions that will be asked in the interviews so you need to practice these see you tomorrow Ta -da.